Hello, good evening, Slalikam, Satsrikad, Namaste, and a good evening to you all, Venus TV viewers. It's the Tonight Show with your favorite presenter, Avzal Akram, here today. This is uh, part two of a three part series. We're running on the uh, general election. Uh, last week we had a, a show on the Liberal Democrats' uh, manifesto, their policies, their pledges, and we had a couple of their candidates who are here to share their thoughts on the uh, manifesto. And this week we're going to be going through the uh, Labour Party's uh, manifesto, and culminating in next week going through the Conservative Party's manifesto and seeing what they have to offer for the uh, election as well. As well as the three main parties, of course, there are a number of other parties like the uh, Greens, the Brexits, the SNP, Clyde, um, and a number of other smaller parties um, whose details you can get from the uh, Election Commission website, as well as some independents who are standing in this election as well. But today we are going to go through the uh, Labour Party uh, manifesto. Normally I would have a couple of uh, guests with me as well. Unfortunately, the guests that I had arranged for the Labour Party today were unfortunately called into hustings meetings or are busy out campaigning and not able to join us today. However, what I will do is do my level best to go through, hence I've got my papers. Usually I don't read stuff, but I have the papers there today to go through some of the points of the Labour Party uh, manifesto. Um, I hope you viewers and maybe um, if there are any uh, Labour Party members, candidates, councillors, colleagues who want to call in and join me, um, add their views, that would be great as well. So please do uh, call us. The number will be on the bottom of the screen to allow you to call into the studio and share your views. I'm no expert on these manifestos, so like other journalists, like other presenters, and uh, you at home as the public, uh, we are going by what's been made available uh, through the uh, manifesto documents and what we can get from the uh, uh, online as well. So um, let's start, let's go through. Um, in no particular order, I've uh, picked uh, a few of the headings which we'll run through. Um, and if we've got some time um, towards the end of the show, I, I, I have the whole manifesto document here as well. We'll pick up on some of the policies that maybe you know, media has not, or the print media has not been picking up at the moment. Uh, we could run through some of those as well. And, you know, the idea of these shows here at Venus TV was to give our viewers an opportunity to uh, hear for themselves um, before they decide who to vote for on what each of the main three parties are offering. And like I said, the other, the other smaller parties, independents, have got their uh, either smaller manifestos or their policies on, online as well. You can check those as well. But we're concentrating on the three big parties for now. So let's look at the Labour Party. Um, their uh, manifesto was launched, uh, called It's Time for Real Change, um, earlier this month. And uh, the main points for me, let's start with Brexit, because, you know, th this is Brexit. We've done nothing for the last three years but talk about Brexit. Um, and uh, excuse me, I am going to read some extracts. So I want to make sure I don't get anything wrong. Um, and if I do, I do apologize in advance. And maybe uh, if there is somebody listening who thinks I've got something wrong, you can call in and correct me as well. I have no issues with that at all. So um, Labour negotiating a withdrawal agreement within three months of forming a government and holding a second referendum with this deal offered alongside a remain option within six months. Jeremy Corbyn would remain neutral while some of his front bench would campaign against their own negotiated New Deal. Now, you've probably been hearing this on uh, political shows, maybe in, in the print as well. And uh, Jeremy Corbyn himself has said many times that, you know, if he was to become the prime minister, the first thing he would do is negotiate a new deal with the European Union. He estimates that new deal will take three months to negotiate and then six months from winning the election, he would actually put a second referendum to the country and ask you, the members of the public, to once again vote on what you would want to choose. And although we don't know what the exact question on the referendum would be, but it sounds like it will be Jeremy Corbyn's, the Labour Party's, negotiated deal, um, which uh, would be different to Boris Johnson's deal that's on the table at the moment, which was obviously different to Theresa May's deal that was on the table before. And that deal would then be pitted against a Remain option. Yeah, so it would be the deal to leave, negotiated by Jeremy Corbyn, against do you want to remain? Now, some of you may well be asking, well, where's the no deal or where's the Brexit? Um, but those, those are not mentioned as being part of the offers. There'll be a, a binary choice again, um, we're led to believe, so you'll have a choice for choosing. Um, 
Within three months, the party would try, as I said, to secure a new based on a permanent and comprehensive UK-wide customs union and close alignment with the single market. So the Labour Party are looking at doing a deal which is going to keep us much closer to the European Union, um, keep all, all of the um, alignments that we have with them, keep a customs wide uh, union with them as well. Um, and therefore, that's why they believe they can get a deal a lot quicker through, because there's not much change to what the status quo is at the moment. And if Brexit was voted again, Labour said it would protect Northern Ireland by ensuring there will be no return to a hard border. Um, they haven't said how, but they, they don't want to, going back to a hard border. Also, automatically, they'll be granting EU nationals the right to continue living and working in the UK, which means freedom movement would likely continue in some shape or form. So that's the Brexit deal. I'm going to leave that with you. We're going to go to a quick break. You ponder that. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And please note the number on the bottom and uh, give me a call and uh, keep me company in the studio. So stay tuned. I'll see you shortly. Hello, viewers. Welcome back to The Tonight Show with Afzal Akram. And we're today discussing the Labour Party manifesto. I'm just going through some key points. Um, to inform our viewers on what's on offer from the Labour Party. As I said in the first part, we did Lib Dems last week and we're doing the Conservatives next week. Um, and if you'd like to join in this conversation, the telephone number should be at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to give me a call and share your views um, on this manifesto as well. We talked a little bit about the Brexit uh, offer that Labour were making, and now I want to move on to the NHS, which seems to be a key programme, a key offer that Labour makes at every election. Um, and their offer, uh, their views on the uh, NHS are um, that they, to begin with, promising to spend more on the NHS in England than any of the parties. You know, the NHS seems to be a bit of a, a bidding round, and one party says, I will spend X amount, the next one says, I'll spend more, and I'll spend more. And so it just keeps going up and up and spiralling. Uh, whether we get to the right amount or not, only time will tell. But uh, Labour is promising to spend more on the NHS in England than the Tories. Um, but Labour reveal plans that they will also abolish all prescription charges. Um, this is likely to cost around £700 million. Um, the elderly would get free personal care in England under Labour, a move which, which would cost an estimated £8 billion a year. Labour will increase expenditure across the health sector by an average of 4.3% per year. They will stop bed cuts and complete the confirmed hospital rebuilds, providing free parking for staff, patients and visitors. Once again, I don't have a figure of what that will cost, but uh, that's providing lots more freebies. Um, they, will expand, they will expand GP training places to provide resources for 27 million more appointments each year and ensure community pharmacy is supported as well as offering free annual NHS dental checkups. So they're adding free NHS dental checkups to the list as well. Um, Labour will improve access to psychological therapies and provide an extra £1.6 billion per year to help with mental health services, with more investment to end out-of-area placements and improved eating disorder services. So lots of new things being uh, offered there. You know, mental health is an area which I think parties are looking to develop services and put more money into, and Labour's doing that um, as well. Um, Alcohol-related deaths and health problems will be addressed through expanded addiction support services, and they will fully fund sexual health services and roll out something called a PREP medication to prevent HIV, so special medication to prevent HIV, and establish a generic drug company which will produce drugs at fair prices. One of the things that Labour has made a quite a big deal, I think, over in the last three, four weeks, is about uh, the cost of drugs companies, uh, or sorry, drugs prices, should I say, um, which are charged by the phas pharmaceutical industry. And one of the worries that Labour has is that if the NHS was privatised or uh, in some way to the Americans um, in some sort of a trade deal, then the prices, they say, of drugs will go up. That is being redu redu reduced by other people saying that's not the case and generic drug companies will come down. But what's interesting to see is that Labour are looking to establish a generic drug company themselves. So it looks like the country, we as, we as a country, would own our own generic drug company, which will produce drugs at, they say, a fairer price. So that would be one to watch out for um, if it was to come about. 
Uh, Labour say they will invest, train and develop NHS staff throughout their careers. So training as they go through. They will introduce a training bursary for nurses, midwives, allied health professionals. I think it's important, um, obviously, if we are to leave Europe, uh, when we do leave Europe, then uh, we will be looking to, uh, you know, train our own nurses and so on. And Labour are putting a bursary into that. Labour have also pledged to tackle the uh, overstretched A&E departments, improve stroke, heart disease and cancer survivor rates with better screening is, is another offer. And for social care, there would be a lifetime cap on the amount people have to pay. So you would have to pay something for social care, but there will be a lifetime cap on the amount. I haven't got that figure with me, unfortunately, or hasn't been mentioned. As expected, the manifesto included the party's previous pledge to introduce free personal care for those aged over 65, with the ambition to extend this provision to all working age adults who need it over a period of time. Carers could also expect an increase in the weekly carers allowance, which is currently at £66.15 and 15 pence a week, whilst those receiving social care at home could expect longer visits from staff as 15-minute visits end. At the moment, there is a, a, a potential uh, uh, average time that each visit is 15 minutes in order to get more visits carried out. The manifesto said there will be free prescriptions, as mentioned before, in England and hospital car park charges for patients, staffs and visitors will come to an end. So once again, quite a lot of uh, money looking to be invested by Labour in providing additional free services through the NHS. Uh, whether the, promos, uh, the proposed level that they are putting in is enough or not, uh, time will tell. Um, but they are looking to uh, uh, heavily invest in the National Health Service. A uh, couple of things on education, and like I was saying earlier, please, the numbers at the bottom of the screen, uh, do feel free to call in and engage, otherwise you're going to be hearing me through the whole show, going through a list of pledges that Labour are looking to make in their manifesto. I'd much rather talk to you, hear your views and what you think about the Labour Party manifesto, or if you've got any specific questions about it, and if I have any details, I'll obviously look them through the manifesto and provide that answer to you where I can. But let's move on to uh, education. Uh, Labour MPs want to uh, abolish uh, every private school in England and force them to sell their playing fields. Well, obviously, if the private schools aren't there, a lot of them sit on valuable um, playing fields. These would um, be sold, most likely to housing, um, but uh, private schools would go and you would have a single comprehensive system um, across the whole country. Good idea, bad idea. Let's hear your view on that. I'm not too sure. Um, private schools will uh, lose their multi-billion pound tax breaks and be ordered to sell off buildings under radical new uh, plans for those private schools. But once again, if they're going to get rid of private schools, then um, I don't know what the tax breaks are. Maybe that's done over a period of time. Um, as part of their shake-up of education, Labour also vowed to abolish the school's inspector Ofsted. Um, so they're, I'm, not look, I'm not sure if they're going to replace Ofsted with something else, but they're abolishing Ofsted so that inspections of schools wouldn't be taking place. Uh, university tuition fees would be scrapped under Labour. If you remember, this was a pledge made before the uh, 2010 election by the Lib Dems. Um, and when they went into coalition uh, with the Conservatives 2010, they were not able to keep to this pledge. But Labour now come out and said that they would scrap uh, tuition fees um, university tuition fees um, for new students I believe I believe ex existing students who have debts already would still be in place this would be for new students um, university fees would be scrapped interesting let's look at uh, nationalization I mean Labour's big plan even in the last election was a uh, policy of nationalization and they are trying to stick to that this time around as well um, Labour plans to renegotiate a massive sweep of industries, um, including the water, energy, utilities, train companies and the Royal Mail. They're looking to take them back into government ownership, which means it would be government employees, maybe they're called civil servants, who would uh, run these uh, businesses as they were in the old days of the 70s and the early 80s as well. And I'm old enough to remember something called uh, British Rail. Um, and uh, that used to be owned by the government before it was privatised and became Network Rail. 
um, and uh, therefore uh, Labour are looking to go back to that. Uh, Royal Mail, once again, would be owned uh, um, by the state um, and the state would not only run it, but they would then set the pricings, uh, the revenue streams for these businesses as well. Um, Labour believe they can do a better job than the private sector um, uh, for these uh, companies. Um, and they would also, they're looking to take water and energy companies back into private ownership as well. Now, saying they're doing this is quite easy, but one of, one of the things which uh, I haven't seen a figure for is that um, it's going to cost many billions of pounds because I believe the most, all these companies are owned by private uh, shareholders and therefore you can't just take them back. You will have to buy them at uh, market rates um, and something uh, someone along the line will have to calculate what that market rate is, what shareholder value is and uh, some sort of an agreement will need to be reached. Um, but I believe this is a multi, multi-billion, hundreds of billions of pounds worth of money would be required to uh, buy these companies back. And then the government would have to run them um, themselves, um, obviously, as Labour say, for the interest of the public. Um, as part, uh, where are we? Um, <clears throat> Savers and pensioners could suffer an estimated uh, 9 billion loss to their holdings, the CBI claimed. Um, obviously, a lot of the pension funds own shares in these large companies. And if, if uh, the government buys these uh, companies back, then um, those uh, shareholders, uh, the pension funds would receive some money. I don't know how much, but they would receive some money and they would have to invest their uh, uh, pensions elsewhere. But that's the nationalisation plan. And the, the only one I will add into there, which came up recently also, um, was offering uh, free broadband. Now, even though that's not nationalisation, um, my understanding is that if they were to uh, offer free broadband to every business and every individual in the country, the government would most likely have to buy BT's open reach division, which is the division that actually builds the infrastructure for broadband across the whole country. So unless you are with uh, one of the cable providers who give you fiber, uh, broadband, the rest of your broadband, whether you're with, and I'm going to mention a few brands here, whether you're with Sky, Talk, Talk, ABC, XYZ, BT, or whoever, they all come through the same copper wire, which is provided by OpenReach. And so the government is proposing to, I believe, nationalize OpenReach, once again, buy that from BT, um, and uh, therefore the government would own it, and then the government would decide how to expand it, where to spend money, whether it would be in cities, whether it would be in rural areas, urban areas, um, how fast, how much to invest in there. Um, and recently the BT chief executive was quoted to say that this would cost something in the region of about a hundred billion pounds just to purchase open reach. Now, like I say, that's something I've read. I don't know what the actual figure would be, but once again, I'm sure uh, a figure would be negotiated if Labour were to go down that route. Let's talk about the economy, shall we? The economy. Uh, Labour have proposed that they will scrap the universal credit. They, they, they don't like universal credit. They will scrap it, but admitted um, that they don't have a plan to replace it at the moment. So we're not sure what they'll replace it with, but they have committed to do away with the universal credit. Now, whether that means that they will do a simple um, tinkering with it and change the name to something else, but keep the system the same. Um, and for those of you who don't know what universal credit is, is basically where the uh, Conservative government brought in a single benefit, which put all the existing benefits together. So rather than getting five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different payments from different departments for the various benefits, whether it was housing, housing, sickness, work benefit, child benefit, um, it was, um, or any other sort of benefit. Um, I think I mentioned housing benefit in that as well. What they said is they would lump them all into one single payment um, and also cap that payment so that there was an upper limit to what people were able to take home in uh, benefits. And they were rolling this out. In fact, it's not rolled out across the whole country yet. It's only um, rolled out in some parts of the country. Um, but Labour are saying they don't like it. They will do away with it. Not sure what they will replace it with, but they will do away with universal credit. So maybe they'll go back to the old system of many benefits or they will introduce something new or maybe just rebadge universal credit and call it something else. I'm not too sure. Um, 
They say they will do this uh, uh, change to the uh, welfare program within the first 100 days of this government and ditch it totally within five years. So, um, you know, it's uh, across the lifetime of parliament. If it's a five year fixed term parliament, they will ditch it totally and start making changes to it within the first 100 days. Um, but I'll tell you what, we'll take a short break on that because I want you to ponder uh, on that. Um, and do give me a call, see what your thoughts are. Um, and we'll come back and we'll carry on with the economy after the break. See you soon. Hello and welcome back viewers to the final part of the Tonight Show with Abzal Akram and we're going through the Labour Party manifesto today. Um, we're in the last part of the show because I'm going to speed up a little bit. There's quite a lot to get through here. Um, it was a 107 page document which I tried to cut down as much as we can um, but there's a lot in there. So we're talking about the economy. Labour's pledged to raise the hourly wage for young workers to £10. Um, the policy would abolish the youth rate and uh, make it a single rate. Uh, uh, Labour has also told business chiefs that they will be paying out more with corporation tax increased to 26% by 2022. A lot of Labour's policies are being said that it's the top 5% of earners, the people earning lots of money, they're going to put their taxes up. Although they have recently admitted that the rest of us as well uh, will be paying a bit more, uh, whereas initially it was said that it wouldn't be, but we would be paying a bit more, but a majority of the tax rights will be by the top 5% and by companies whose corporation tax is going to go up to 26% by 2022. Um, another radical move, and this is radical, uh, uh, Labour are planning to introduce a four-day working win, a week if they win. So whereas some people work five days at the moment, or majority of people work five days a week at the moment, they will look into reduce that to four weeks without, yes, without loss of earnings. So you work four days for the price of five days, and Labour are looking to phase that in because they believe that's the way to go. Um, be interesting to hear what your views on that are, especially if your businesses. How will you cope and manage with that? Um, where else are we? Uh, Labour are looking to scrap the planned rise in the pension age uh, beyond 66 and introduce a financial transaction tax and excessive pay levy and a second homes tax. So lots of new taxes going in there. Um, they've also vowed to reverse the cuts to inheritance tax. So we'll have to pay more tax on inheritance and they will give EU nationals living in the UK an automatic right to stay. Uh, broadband I've already talked about, so I'm not going to talk about that. The parties also vow to give 16-year-olds a vote as well um, from the next election if they get in. And uh, people working in the public sector under a Labour government will get a 5% pay rise, which is above inflation. Under Labour's parts of the plans to reverse the cuts the sector has experienced. Labour will restore public sector pay to at least pre-financial crisis levels in real terms. Uh, which means above inflation pay rises for the public sector. I don't know how, what effect that will have on the private sector. Um, and Labour's also pledged to end zero hours contracts, strength trade union rights and give people four new bank holidays. Um, so once again, uh, more holidays. So once again, through the economy section, lots of more freebies, lots of more pay rises, lots of tax increases, but also lots of benefits coming to people as well um, through that. Let's look at environment. Labour plans to try to win the green vote by enforcing a windfall tax on oil companies, on those who have knowingly damaged our climate, helping to cover the costs. So oil companies, they're going to put a levy on them and look to uh, put that money into environmental projects. Um, Labour's planning a green industrial revolution to create hundreds of thousands of jobs as part of their, in, uh, as I said, green industrial revolution. Um, and they want to achieve the majority of their emissions reductions by 2030. Um, and they say that this will help UK households over a period of time save energy bills of up to £417 per household. Labour will introduce a Clean Air Act with a vehicle scrappage scheme and clear air zones and provide a £5.6 billion in funding to improve the standard of flood defences and respond to the increased risk of flooding. As we know, we've had quite a lot of flooding in the northern areas of the country. Um, they will plant trees, and I've forgotten the number of trees, they're all once again outbidding each other on how many trees they will plant. I, I don't know how many trees they will plant, um, but, uh, but they are all bidding with each other, the parties, on the number. 
um, and they look to create new national parks and establish, establish a new environmental tribunal. Let's look at immigration, a few points under the immigration. Uh, Labour say they will scrap the 2014 Immigration Act, which prevents illegal immigrants accessing and abusing public services or the labour market and making it easier and quicker to remove those with no right to be here. Good, bad, well, you can make a judgment call on that. They say the immigration system must allow the UK to recruit the people we need and to welcome them and their families and the UK's work visa system must fill any skills or labour shortages that arise. They vow to stop the undercutting of wages and conditions and exploitation of all workers, including migrant workers, although they don't say how they're going to do that. Labour will also work with others to resume rescue missions in the Mediterranean, cooperate with the French authorities put an end to the horrific camps and establish safe and legal routes for asylum seekers. Once here, refugees will have the right to work, access to public services and will be treated humanely by governments at all levels. So uh, making it easier. If we remain in the EU, freedom movement would continue. If we leave, it will be subject to negotiations, but Labour say we recognise the social and economic benefits free movement has brought in terms of EU citizens here and UK citizens abroad, and we will seek to protect those rights, the manifesto reads. So I read that freedom of movement would continue under a Labour negotiated agreement with the EU. Let's look at housing quickly. Labour pledged to deliver on everyone's right to a good home. The manifesto says its new social household programme would uh, provide at least 150,000 new council and social homes a year. Now, we keep hearing these numbers from all the parties, and I can't remember the last time any of the parties actually meant and built these number of houses, but their target is 150,000 council and social homes a year. Uh, Labour say they will place a levy on overseas companies that want to buy housing in the UK, but would give local people first dibs on new homes built in their areas. Not quite know how that will work, but that's what they want to do. Um, they want to tax homes that have been empty for over a year. And turning to private renters, Labour would introduce rent controls and open-ended tenancies. So you could technically go into a house as a private tenant and live there for life. Um, if there isn't a justifiable reason for the landlord to ask you to leave. Uh, for low-income households, instead of paying for double glazing, loft insulation or better heating systems, this would be free. Oh, another freebie. Um, so double glazing, loft insulation and better heating for low households would be provided free by the Labour government. Um, not sure what the levels of low-income households means. Um, that hasn't been put in, but that's something they've put in their manifesto. Um, others will be able to apply for interest-free loans to make their homes more energy efficient. And they propose that this would cost the government £60 billion. Let's look at legal aid. Uh, restoring all legal aid for early advice, including housing, social security, family, immigration cases. Consulting on the civil legal aid means test and acting on the recommendation of the criminal legal aid review. Um, halting clo uh, court closures and cuts to staffs and reviewing the court's reform programme. Reviewing funding for the Crown Prosecution Services. Providing alternative, investing in alternatives to custody, including more women's centres and problem-solving courts. Uh, recruiting new community lawyers, expanding the network of law centres. Um, introducing no-fault divorce, um, that's an interesting one. Um, and working with the Labour government in Wales to implement the findings of the Thomas Commission on Justi Justice. Allocating 20 million to support survivors of modern slavery. Uh, people trafficking and uh, domestic violence, and they want to create a charter of digital rights to protect data and online rights as well. I am speeding up, so we're getting near to the end of the show. Um, on leasehold, they want to end the sale of new leasehold properties. Um, so you won't be able to sell leasehold properties anymore under a Labour government. Abolish unfair fees and conditions, giving leaseholders the right to buy their freehold at an affordable price and also introducing equivalent rights for freeholders on privately owned estates. You mm, can see a lot of legal problems there, but that's what Labour would want to do. Um, Labour are promising voters to implement a £250 billion 
10-year infrastructure fund paid for by borrowing to invest in infrastructure. And by infrastructure, they mean building roads, bridges, um, and other public sector amenities. Um, they want to borrow uh, 250 billion pounds over 10 years into a fund and spend that. Um, not sure how we're gonna pay it back, but that's how they want to do that. Um, they want to get rid of the benefit cap and the two child limit. Labour will get rid of the controversial universal credit scheme, as I mentioned before, as well as the restriction of benefits being paid for only two children. Um, there is no estimation for this and no costing as yet either. On electric cars, they want to target those voters concerned about the environment. Another Labour pledge is to boost research production of electric cars. This would cost £3 billion for research and £2 billion for factories. So another £5 billion going into uh, electric cars research and development, into building them for uh, the future. Um, they're also looking at something called the National Car Clubs. They would invest in National Car Clubs, creating publicly owned community car sharing hubs. Once again, you know, with Labour, they want to own a lot more. They want the state to own more um, and, and for the state to run these uh, businesses. They aim to put 30,000 electric cars on the streets for hire by local people. Um, nothing about how much it would cost or how it would do it, but they, they want to be able to do that. Um, Rebecca, Rebecca Long Bailey, Labour's Shadow BEIS Secretary, that's the Business Department Secretary, said Labour's community car clubs will put collective car transport in the hand of communities, reducing emissions, improving air quality in urban areas and boosting domestic manufacturing. As part of our green industrial revolution, clean air has to be a priority and that means making electric car sharing available to everyone. Labour will ensure every community has its own electric car sharing club owned and controlled by the people, and they estimate that this would cost 300 million pounds to put together. Uh, free TV licenses for over 75s, I'm not quite there yet, but uh, looking forward to getting that freebie when I get there. Um, hopefully I'll get there. Uh, like the Conservatives, Labour has picked up the outrage the BBC saw when they uh, announced it, and therefore they want free TV licenses for two thirds of over 75 year olds. I'm not sure what they're going to do with the other one third unless it's means tested. Um, so let's look at a few other broader uh, commitments that they've made. Um, Labour want to end in work poverty. Um, they want to end uh, food bank use. Um, they want to end 1.4 million older people not getting the care they need. Um, the uh, over 100,000 generally affordable homes built per year, and I think their target's been set at, as I mentioned before, to 150,000. Uh, they want to bring an end to rough sleeping. Uh, we've already mentioned an end to tuition fees. Uh, they want to reduce waiting times for A&E and cancer treatments. Um, Brexit they want sorted in six months, and smaller car sizes. But, you know, I've taken out bits that I thought would be interesting from their main document. Um, there's a whole heap um, in that document for people to uh, read and go through. But it's quite clear from their manifesto that Labour are believing in borrowing to invest, borrowing to spend. Labour want to put taxes up, um, they say for the top 5%, um, but I believe the other 95 are going to get some tax rises of some sort as well. Um, they want to increase the tax that uh, companies pay. Um, up to 26% by 2022, and they believe that that will be enough to fund everything that they're promising. And then after the launch of the manifesto, they actually bought a new policy out, um, which, was, which would cost, uh, I believe, another uh, in the region of £58 billion. And this was to provide payouts to those women who are losing out because it was announced um, that their uh, retirement age would be uh, brought forward rather than later and therefore they've had less time to save and therefore their retirement pots would be less um, and therefore Labour is saying that we want to uh, give them that money. Um, once again, it's not means tested, it will go to everybody, regardless of whether you're a billionaire, millionaire, you need the money you don't, or you know, you're, you're, you're on welfare, um, and that has affected you um, as well. I think that's called the WASPI uh, women, uh, they call it for short, um, and so Labour want to put 58 billion into that, and that was not costed in their plan, so it'll be interesting to see where they will find that money. But we are under a 
government government are going to be looking for a larger state um, uh, support um, that we would get. A lot of the utilities, the Royal Mail, um, a broadband company, Openreach, would be owned by government, run by government. Um, they say for the benefit of the people, um, and only time will tell whether Labour will be able to do that as a better job than the private uh, companies that run them at the moment. Um, and so if you feel that that's the sort of uh, country that you want to live in, that's the sort of government you want, then Labour Party's uh, manifesto is the one that you need to look at a bit more detail. Um, but, you know, it's going to be very important to use your vote clearly coming up. And so, as I said before, in the last election, in the last week, we looked at the Lib Dems uh, manifesto, went through some of theirs. Today, I've quite rapidly gone through and probably gone through more than we did last week on what Labour have to offer you. And next week, we'll be looking at what the Conservative Party are offering in their manifesto. And you'll have an opportunity, should you wish to, to take part through the uh, call in on that show as well. Um, and like I said at the beginning, we're coming to the end of the show now. But as well as the uh, Conservative Party, the Labour Party and Lib Dem Party. Um, you also have Brexit, you have um, the SNP, you have the Green Party and you have Clyde uh, over in uh, Wales as well as uh, UKIP and other smaller parties as well as a number of independents running across the country. And therefore if you want more information please go onto the Election Commission's website where you have a list of all the parties and also their manifestos. Have a look for them for yourselves. I've tried my best to give you a little snapshot last week and this week of two of the parties and we we will finish off with the Conservative Party next week. So stay with us. Have a great, fantastic week. I look forward to uh, seeing you uh, back on The Tonight Show uh, next week, Tuesday at 8 o'clock, where we'll be talking, to, hopefully, to some Conservative candidates. And if not, I'll be going through the Conservative Manifesto with you as well. God bless. Have a safe week. See you next week.